Miss Mr. Woman is Inspector Gadget, the main character of the Inspector Gadget TV show, comics and movies. He's a cyborg inspector who has worked for a variety of secret organisations over the years that fights crime, mainly crime caused by Dr. Claw and his cat, who are the leaders of MAD, a crime organisation. The show started in 1983, created by three people, Andy Hayward, who used to work for Hanna-Barbera on All Stars Laugh Olympic, eventually left to join the DSC Animation Company. Really not well. Nonsense, Penny. I... <laughs> <laughs> Inspector Gadget was directed by Bruno Bianchi, who also directed shows like Rainbow Bright and produced Witch. Gadget, you will soon be ancient history. <laughs> John Chalopin, another co creator of Inspector Gadget, who founded DSG Entertainment and also worked on the real Ghostbusters, Sonic Underground, and Dennis the Menace. Inspector Gadget was the first show actually made by DSG Entertainment. The character Inspector Gadget is said to be inspired by Get Smart, a 1960 television show that parodies the Bond films in a comedic way. It's also inspired by Inspector Clouseau from the Pink Panther films, who's notably not very good at his job, and Dynomar, who's a robotic doll with extending limbs from the Scooby-Doo franchise, who is a sidekick to the Scooby-Doo version of Batman, Blue Falcon. If you put all three of those things together, you get the comedy detective series about a cyborg directory man who's not very good at his job. The first time Inspector Gadget appeared was in the TV show Inspector Gadget. Shocker. To the rest of the world, Inspector Gadget is a world-famous inspector who's always saving the world from nefarious plots. We know this because he's recognised in the first ever episode by someone in the Winter Olympic. You're Inspector Gadget, the most famous detective. <coughs> I'm off duty. However, to anyone who knows him personally, he is a mess. The show is about Inspector Gadget travelling with his niece Penny and dog Brain. From his perspective, he is always stopping crime and keeping his loved ones safe, when in actuality, Penny and Brain are the ones saving the day. Every episode, Gadget storms off headfirst and confident in his ability to solve whatever case they have for that episode. Penny always orders Brain to follow him and keep him out of trouble, such as when Brain had to save Gadget from a mad yodeler who was there to assassinate him and he had to save the Winter Olympic from being blown up. In the episode Down to the Farm, we had to stop a missile from launching and destroying Gadget's hometown. I would like to remind you, this is a regular dog and he's done all of these things. In the episode Monster Lake, he has to stop Gadget from getting eaten by a robotic Loch Ness monster and even after Brain saves him, Gadget just walks into the robot's mouth anyway, thinking it's a cave. I'm surprised this dog does not have grey hairs with all the stress this cyborg causes him. It is a reoccurring joke that Gadget mistakes Brain as a mad henchman and then tries to fight the dog every episode. He fights his dog every episode because Brain's wearing a disguise and he doesn't recognise his own dog every episode. Moving on to his niece Penny, I have concluded her parents must hate her or they must be dead to leave her with her uncle. In the first episode alone, she almost died three times due to his negligence. She was mainly only in the last 11 minutes of the first episode. Penny is the actual one solving all the cases whilst Gadget gets all the glory. Luckily, she is humble and does not mind. She normally sends Brain to keep Gadget out of trouble whilst she stays back, hacks any device claw sends. The next character that is key to Inspector Gadget is Chief Quimby. He is the chief police officer Gadget worked for. For some reason, he always chooses to track Gadget down and give him his assignments in person. Every episode he gives him a piece of paper with his assignment on and every episode that piece of paper is meant to self-destruct after being read and every episode <laughs> Somehow that paper always blows him up. Regardless if he runs from it, if he hides from it, it always blows him up. <laughs> We have the main antagonist, Dr. Claw. We never see his face, only his arm, for some reason. This was a very popular thing in cartoons, not seeing certain characters' faces, such as the parents in Cow and Chicken, Tom's owners in Tom and Jerry, and Miss Bellum in the Powerpuff Girls. Anyway, Dr. Claw normally is in his secret base, but when he does venture outside, he always escapes just in the nick of time. No one laughs at me and gets away with it. The last laugh will be mine. Also, why does the Abominable Snowman robot have bolt? Nipples. The show only ran for two years from 1983 to 1985 with two seasons and 86 episodes. Seven years after the series concluded, they released their first special in 1992, which was a Christmas special called Inspector Gadget Saves Christmas. The special is a continuation of the 1983 show and it's just a Christmas themed episode. The special starts with Dr. Claw breaking into Santa's workshop and taking control of the elves. Don't know why the elves have something in their hats that can control them, but oh well. 
After he got the elves under his control, they captured Santa and Thor took over and ordered the elves to make faulty toys that would break as soon as they got open so that the kids would hate Santa and blame him for their broken toys. At the local mall, for some reason, this grown man is sitting on Santa's lap. Santa reveals himself to be Chief Quimby. Do you know who this is? Chief? I'm right next to you. You're where? Right here in a Santa suit. No need for a phone, Chief. I'm right here. Tell the gadget something weird has been happening at the North Pole and they need to investigate. And as always, Quimby gets blown up. They head to the North Pole and Gadget talks to the man he thinks is Santa. Penny quickly realises something is wrong with the elves and goes to investigate even Brain to watch Gadget. Dr. Claw orders the elves to attack Gadget. They miss a few times but eventually they throw him down a hole where they meet the real Santa. Gadget seems to think this is a fake as he just met the real Santa and starts to interrogate him and tortures Santa. He's definitely getting on the naughty list. To be fair to Gadget, if I saw a group of reindeer sitting like this, I would not think they were real either. Then we find out the reason this is all happening. Normally Dr. Claw is aiming to take over the world with his schemes. They won't trust Santa Claus ever again and he deserves it for not bringing me that dirty trick set when I was a baby claw. Sir, you are a grown man with seemingly an endless amount of money. Buy it yourself. Penny, as normal, saves the day and releases the elves from their mind control and Santa stops all good for him. Gadget is unaware of what just happened but Christmas is saved. At one point Santa called Gadget his friend after he tortured him. I was so confused. As I mentioned before, this came out after the show had concluded in 1992. I am so confused as to why they waited seven years to release this but oh well. Next we have Gadget Boy and Heather. It is debated whether or not Gadget Boy and Inspector Gadget are the same person. The biggest support that they are is in the Inspector Gadget spin-off field trip in the episode Florida St. Augustine. When Inspector Gadget drinks water from the fountain of youth, he turns into Gadget Boy. Wowzers, this stuff really works. Either my gadgets just shrunk. However, a lot of people believe they are different characters in the same world and Gadget Boy is just built inspired by Spectre Gadget. Also, they are voiced by the same voice actor. The first episode of the series is called Raider of the Lost Mummy, which is about the historian who accidentally uncovers the gate to the Neverworld. We are introduced to Myron Dabble, the inventor of Gadget Boy. Then we meet Heather, who is a secret agent who will assist Gadget Boy in becoming the inspector he is meant to be, allegedly. <laughs> Oh, there are still a few bugs to work out. This episode shows us Gadget's first mission. If we were to compare Gadget and Inspector Gadget, Gadget Boy has more directly to do with saving the day normally than Inspector Gadget when basically it's just Henny saves the day with the help of Brain. But in Gadget Boy and Heather, Gadget may not be the best Inspector ever, but he still clumsily saves the day. If this is an Inspector Gadget, he gets worse at his job as he ages. I want to talk about some of the key characters other than Gadget. We have Myron and he's a venture throughout the show. He gives Gadget Boy new gadgets every episode to help with his missions. In the pilot, he says Gadget Boy is a child who has been given the mind of an adult detective in the body of a kid. I do wonder where he got the child from because Gadget Boy is a cyborg, meaning he is part human. Did he just pluck from the newborn ward in a hospital somewhere? Is someone just missing their child? Next we have Heather, very much serves the same purpose as Penny to help Gadget get on the right path, but she is an adult. She does the majority of the actual detective work and the use gadgets, gadgets to solve any issues they run into. Then we have G9 who is a robotic dog that is a part of the team of Heather and Gadget. He serves the same purpose as Brain to follow Gadget Boy around but actually makes sense that he can do the stuff that he does because he is a robotic dog or maybe a cyborg unlike Brain who is just a regular dog. G9 can actually change into anything to help Gadget Boy and Heather out on a mission. What kind of secret Interpol agent is afraid of a harmless little space time warp leading to an unknown dimension beyond life and death? It is unclear if he's a cyborg or robot because in the episode, like Power of Babel, when the world is hit with a babelizer ray that makes everyone say something different than what they actually mean, only living matter should be affected and G9 can talk now. And since G9's brain is sort of like yours and sort of like mine, now he's just hard to understand. Then we have Chief Stromboli, who is this show's Chief Quimby, who gives Gadget Boy his missions each episode, but instead of a self-destructing paper gag, Gadget Boy causes him distress with the inventions that Double makes in a different way each episode, so at least he has a variety of the pain he experiences, whereas Quimby just got blown up. Spydra is the main villain of the series, whereas Dr. Claw waited to rule the world with his criminal enterprise mad. Spydra just wants money. The world and all its treasures shall belong to me, Spydra! Once I eliminate Gadget Boy! <laughs> Spydra actually has powers that if anyone sees her face, she freezes them to stone. And she has a pet vulture. I do not know why they are together. They do not like each other. Am I something or am I something? I don't know. I never quite figured that one out. <laughs> 
She has two henchmen the whole time, Malt and Hummus, that she sends to do some of her dirty work while she does the main eviling of the episode. She sends them to try and kill Gadget every episode while she does like the thieving and destroying like a girl boss. This show makes Gadget way more bearable of a character because it's not a grown man constantly putting his niece in danger and having to be bailed out by her. Gadget Boy's clumsiness and silliness behaviour is way more forgivable considering he's canonically a toddler. Gadget Boy and Heather had two very different seasons. So different, the second season is referred to as Gadget Boy's Adventures in History. This is due to the change in law for children's entertainment in America that TV needed to be educational and informative. So Gadget Boy changed a lot. Gadget Boy started travelling through time, meeting historical and mythological figures such as the Three Musketeers, the Wright Brothers, Charlie Chaplin, Leonardo da Vinci and many more. I was not made aware of this change in law until recently but it's very obvious when you watch shows made in the late 90s and early 2000s that they did not want to be accused of not following the new guidelines. Messaging and educational purposes of each episode was not very subtle. <laughs> the first episode obeying the new guidelines called The Vulture Has Landed. The way they make the show more educational is, is by making Spider go back in time to mess with history for her own gain. So Gadget Boy and the crew have to find out what she did and undo it. And they always bump into historical figures. In the episode The Vulture Has Landed, Spider wants to steal a moonstone that was found on the moon. Since it's a great source of power, so they have to stop her from messing up the moon landing. Apparently G9 has always been a time machine this whole time and he just takes him there. For some reason Gadget Boy thinks he's at the beach. It wasn't funny the first time they made the joke, they made the joke, it wasn't any funnier. The other 10 times they made the same joke. Gadget Boy, look out! Obviously, they saved the day, and Neil, and Neil Armstrong thinks he is hallucinating because he saw all of this going down. What the? Houston, do you see Neil Armstrong doing a stand-up act in front of the landing module? Watching this again, I have way more memories of this show versus the original one. I actually enjoyed Gadget Boy and Heather more. Gadget Boy and Heather lasted two seasons with 52 episodes from 1995 to 1998. I was thinking this as I watched the show, but if this is the origin story of Inspector Gadget, which it may or may not be, what happened to Heather, Dabble and G9? I can assume Chief Stromboli died of old age or because of Gadget, but what happened the rest of them. Anyway, moving on from Death by Old Age. I mentioned this spin-off earlier when I spoke about the Fountain of Youth episode, but let's talk fully about this show. As I mentioned before, the guidelines changed so TV network were trying to make more educational content, thus Inspector Gadget Field Trip was born. Inspector Gadget Field Trip is technically the first live action version of Inspector Gadget. This show was an educational travel series which went around the world. They have this animated version of Inspector Gadget, and as I mentioned earlier, Gadget Boy briefly appears. The Fountain of Youth still springs eternal after all these years. But no other characters in either If Better Gadget or Gadget Boy and Heather appeared in the series. The show took kids all around the world to London, Italy, New York and many other places. The show had two seasons with 22 episodes from 1996 to 1998. This was also the final time that Don Adams would voice the character of Gadget as he retired from acting. Next they made a director video called Inspector Gadget's Gadget's Greatest Gadget. Gadget is asked by Quimby to show the new recruit, which is us, the audience, some of his greatest, most high tech, state of the art gadget. Gadget then shows our three episodes. The Cape Man cometh. This episode set in Romanovia and Gadget's Gadgets. He also gets blown up by Claw at the end of all this. Wowzers! I've heard of time flying, but this is- This is the first piece of Gadget content. Living Inspector Gadget, new voice actor, Reese Lamarchi. This was released in 1999. We are really thrown straight into the deep end of this show, Gadget and the Gadgetine. The previous two shows, Inspector Gadget and Gadget Boy, had Gadget being helped by a female sidekick who did all the work, a dog that constantly saved his life, and his boss was a guy he accidentally injured every episode. Penny still exists in this version, but she stays back in the lab most of the time. This show does not have a canine companion. Instead, it has the Gadgetine, Fidget and Digit. Let's get into the first episode called Don't Call Me Gadget. It starts with this guy called Nozair, being sent to investigate some alien activity in a small town. Nozair then gets kidnapped. Turns out the aliens kidnapped him believing he was Gadget. Creature came to investigate, therefore it must be Gadget. Gadget gets sent to look for Nozair and meets the aliens that kidnapped Nozair but does not realise because he is stupid. The aliens eventually realise I am not Gadget! 
they got the wrong man and they kidnap Gadget and the Gadgeteens follow. We eventually find out that the aliens are being tricked by Claw and his henchmen into thinking Gadget was a villain of Earth and they were hired to capture him in exchange for the moon. The Claw henchmen tell the aliens Gadget is playing dumb and waiting to strike so the aliens put this device on his head that should reverse his brain making him dumb but because Gadget is already dumb he has room temperature IQ. The device in fact makes him smart. This allows Gadget to escape saving the day. Fidget and Digit are kind of just there. Fidget and Digit, the Gadgeteens are introduced in this episode. They are two robots clearly based on Gadget. The Gadgeteens were invented by Penny to act as Gadget's sidekick. I was wondering where Gadget's previous sidekick brain went and I became very worried he died which wouldn't be surprising considering how often he was put in mortal danger but no he is alive. We discover brain has retired in the episode no brainer. Gadget is ordered to go to a secret location by himself to learn about a secret mission. Fidget and Digit follow him there but get thrown off his trail. Gadget gets there first and it turns out the call isn't from Nozair like he thought it was, it was from a mad agent who then kidnaps him. After Gadget has been missing for a whole week, Penny begins to panic. Fidget points out the oil used to fix Gadget at the beginning of the episode had a very strong smell. If only there was a way to track it down. Then Penny gets an idea. She goes to the secluded location that has several notable signs scattered around and there is Brain. Penny gives him a collar that allows him to talk. Turns out after years of being injured and attacked due to Gadget's stupidity, Brain is now traumatised by Gadget. He cannot even hear the word Gadget anymore without feeling fear. Now, I'll never find my uncle. They'll probably put me in some orphanage. He even dislikes the Gadgeteens because they remind him of Gadget, but he still agrees to help Penny because he cares about her. Going back to what Gadget's doing this whole episode, Dr. Von Headcase spent the whole episode experimenting and torturing Gadget, but Gadget thought he was at a spa the entire time and didn't realise he was kidnapped. Brain was right to retire. Look what this man did to him. We never see him again in the series, understandably. He spent one day with this man and ended up in a full body cast. Chief Quimby also appeared in the episode Super Boss Gadget. He also got blown not twice in this episode because of Gadget. These people should stay away from him. This version is probably the most different so far. Penny usually stays home whereas she used to travel alongside him making it the first time the female companion is not right there to help him. They split up the role of Quimby who were previously Gadget's boss in the other shows who always end up injured. In Gadget and the Gadgeteens they split the boss role into two characters Colonel Nozair and General Sir. We have General Sir the head of the organisation Womp who has nothing but positive experiences with Gadget and he thinks he's good at his job. Then we have Nozair who hates Gadget and always ends up horribly injured due to Gadget. In the episode Wrestle in Peace he has a dream that Gadget dies. He literally dances on his grave whilst Penny is mourning. The only family member she had because it's canonical in this version of the show that her parents are dead and if something happens to Gadget she'll be put into foster care and this man is dancing. I really like this character. It's far more realistic if every time you interacted with a person you were horribly injured because of them you would grow to hate them. Way more realistic than just getting over it like Quimby and Stromboli does. Obviously the biggest change in dynamic is the addition of Fidget and Digit. Brotherly love and then brotherly squabbles. I don't particularly love them or hate them. They're kind of just there. The show only had one season with two episodes from 2002 2003. Oh, happy, happy hmm. We have a movie Inspector Gadget's Last Case. After a car chase with the Claw henchman, the Gadget Mobile is damaged. I haven't mentioned the Gadget Mobile so far, but he has been very attached to it and transform its appearance to whatever Gadget needs it to be. One big difference about it added to the movie is it taught. The car is damaged and is in car hospital. This man gave mouth to mouth to the car. Luckily the car survives. Penny and Brain come to visit the car. Brain is in this movie. Gadget gets summoned by Quimby who is also in this movie. Quimby tells Gadget his car is too much of a liability and causes too much damage so if it messes up one more time he has to get rid of it. The next day a giant man is attacking a bridge and before Gadget can get there this man called Debonair gets there first saving the day and making Gadget look bad. The Gadget mobile is blamed for the lateness and is fired. I do find it funny how there is a new story about this car blaming the car. <laughs> Coming on the heels of a slew of mechanical breakdowns suffered by the Gadget Mobile, serious doubts are being raised as to the ability of Gadget and his vehicle to defend Metro City. This whole movie is about how Claw creates his own crime fighting cyborg to make Gadget look bad and get fired so that he can commit crimes in peace. Penny and Brain, as normal, figure out the case and nudge Gadget in the right direction. And even after firing him, the car comes to help Gadget and they expose Debonair and Claw's plan is foiled. He escapes, apparently. That transformation formula, Claw can disguise himself as anything or anybody. Right, Penny. 
It could be anybody. Go, go, gadget restraining device. We did not see him escape. This movie is clearly set before Brain was traumatized by Gadget, but it does come out during Gadget and the Gadgetine in 2002. Also, the voice actor for the car is the same actor who played Urkel in Family Matters, and I found out he reprised his role of Urkel in 2009 with Scooby Doo and Guess Who. Not relevant, just interesting. Overall, I enjoyed the movie. Penny and Brain were less involved with the case than they are in the TV show, therefore, they made Gadget slightly more capable at his job than normal. Penny still technically saves the day but we saw Gadget actually doing some crime fighting without the assistance of a child and her dog. Three years later after that movie another movie is made called Inspector Gadget Biggest Caper Ever a CGI film that came out in 2005. This was the last gadget piece of media made by DIC. We are just acting like Gadget and the Gadgetines never happened because Brain is back and is almost immediately blown up. He should have stayed retired. Claw escapes jail because they actually caught him for once. They clearly couldn't keep him and Quimby instructs Gadget to find him. Next we see Brain in mortal danger again this poor dog. Whilst Gadget and the Gadget Mobile are arguing the Gadget Mobile voiced by Bernie Mac. I put that. Hey hey slow your roll Gadget. I know you ain't about to mess up the G-Mobile's paint job now come on now baby. They crash into a ditch that used to be the city jail that Claw blew up to escape and we find a dinosaur egg in said hole. Then the mayor sees it and figures he can turn it into a tourist attraction because no one wants to come to Metro City where they live due to Claw always attacking and destroying the city. Claw sees the mayor talking about it on TV and tries to steal the egg. Whilst the gadget is arguing about hot dogs and juggling. Uh, say chief, how about some relish and mustard for my lizzie dog? Make it I'm on Claw's henchmen steal the egg. Completely by accident, Gadget stumbles upon the henchmen and he accidentally beats them up whilst trying to hit a pinata. He ends up with the egg. They get the egg back to the town centre and it hatches. Every time it eats metal, it gets bigger. Not terrifying at all. Claw's henchmen starts playing prehistoric mating calls and lures the lizard away with Gadget and Brain following behind it. They get to Claw's castle and Claw tries to give it a Megatron device but the lizard only eats metal and this is plastic so he won't eat it. Penny tries to save Gadget but gets kidnapped by the lizard. They end up giving the lizard drinking liquid and it shrinks down and drops the car. The lizard grows again eventually and starts working for the city juggling with Gadget. This was meant to be the start of a bunch of CGI Inspector Gadget films but due to poor ratings it was cancelled. This movie was very boring. <laughs> I'm not surprised it did not get more movies. At least we're done with CGI Inspector Gadget, right? <sighs> At least it looks better, I guess. After a decade, the Inspector Gadget franchise made a new TV show. The first episode starts with Thor waking up from hibernation, basically. Apparently, after the last battle with Gadget, he crash landed and was frozen in an iceberg. Then we see Penny training to fight evil. Then Quimby calls her to tell her Claw has resurfaced and Penny announces they need to go and get Gadget, who has been retired since getting rid of Claw. Then we see Brain packing, who just not to be near Gadget, but Penny talks him into it. Penny set this door free of your uncle. We cut to Gadget harassing these poor men playing golf, then Quimby pops up and Gadget returns to HQ. <laughs> Some things never change. Gadget gets a new suit from this guy. It's not that different. If they hadn't mentioned it, I would not have noticed. Gadget and Penny are searching through his memories to find Dr. Claw's claw, which Gadget misplaced in their last battle with help from Talon, the new intern at HQ. They figure out where the claw is. It's in a village in the rainforest. Then Talon attacks them. Turns out he is Claw's nephew and Penny is really disappointed because she liked him. Then he escapes to get Claw's claw and sends down an EMP that shuts down everything including Gadget. He's not dead. This is the second time in the Inspector Gadget franchise that Penny has been attracted to Claw's nephew. In the show Gadget and the Gadgetines, Penny fell for William Claw, nephew of the Claw, who is not evil and had no idea the rest of his family was evil. William would be the cousin of Talon. The second episode of the series goes as expected. Gadget is fine. They defeat Claw. Same old, same old. But we do see a reappearance of the Gadget Mobile, which Gadget tried to use but it turned to dust and no one really cared and they just got a new one. They had a whole plot of a movie in Inspector Gadget's last case was about how important and irreplaceable this car was. Penny was borderline tears when he got rid of the Gadget Mobile. In this she does not bat her eye as it turns to dust in front of her. Rip the Gadget Mobile, at least I cared about you. My old trusty Gadget Mobile, just as good as new.
more rusty than trusty. I did notice Claw is way more goofy in this version. He's always educating Talon on the art of villainy, and I do find it funny. You can make a 3D image in like seconds. Because nephew, model building is an art. Overall, I think the new version of Gadget is fine. Personally, my favourite show in the franchise is Gadget Boy and Heather. They have added some new tech in this new show to try and make it more exciting for modern kids. I had four seasons with 53 episodes from 2015 to 2018. Earlier, I kind of skipped the two live action films in 1999 and 2003. They are there. I'm not going to talk about them. I don't like them. Moving on. Like with any popular franchise, they try and make as much money as possible. So they made things like video games and toys. I have never played any of the games or with any of the toys but with the toy they made for Claw we do know what he looked like so that's key information. Considering the original show was so short-lived and had a pretty simple formula of Gadget getting himself in trouble and Penny and Brain saving him it is surprising that the franchise grew into what it is today. Recently a live action reboot of Inspector Gadget was announced to be in the production by Disney. I would like to highlight Penny's evolution of the character from the first show to now. In the first show Inspector Gadget in 1983 she was 10 and as of the 2015 version she is 16. She has spent six years of her life ensuring her uncle does not die. She has really grown as a character from always staying back out of danger to actually going on missions with her uncle with permission. Go her. As mentioned before Gadget and the Gadgeting only had one season and I get why. Their addition did not add anything to the show. I did not find them annoying or anything but I also did not find them notable. The purpose for adding new characters is normally to sell toys of them and I did not care about them either way. Not enough to annoy my parents into buying me a fidget or digit toy. When it comes to the main villains out of this franchise, I prefer Spider over Dr. Claw. She was a way more involved villain. She really put all her effort into trying to murder this toddler. That miserable munchkin get boy. I'll get him now. I'll get you get boy if it's the last thing I do all the franchise and the history and the lore of Inspector Gadget was fun to look into and I hope you all enjoyed it too. That will be all good. Bye!